Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny and I'm back twice in one day. I know it's a miraculous <laughs> thing, but today we're going to talk about alcohol based markers. Yay! Because there are a lot of brands of alcohol based markers out there at various price points. So the brands that we're going to take a look at are, are you ready? Spectrum Noir, Letraset Pro, Faber Castell Pit, Prismacolor, Chameleon, Copic, and lastly, Chromatics. Now, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the Chromatics because I'm not even sure they are still around. Laurel says Letraset was bought out, but are they still being manufactured? Because I really did kind of like them. Um, here's the this. So that's what we're going to go over today. By the way, so what we're going to do is I have three different substrates that we're going to play with today. Um, we're surfaces. So we're going to use some regular, just plain cardstock. I have got Upo cardstock, which is not really cardstock. It's polypropylene. And... I've got some glossy paper, and actually this is this is photo paper, because here's the thing, glossy paper is a lot harder to get than it used to be. You used to be able to like go to Stampin' Up! and get some like nice glossy markers, and you can't really find them anymore. So I'm using glossy photo paper because that's a nice facsimile. So what we're going to do today is mostly swatch testing. I picked purple, or as close to purple as I could get. Um... And what we're going to do is try some basic blending techniques, try some basic um, just like saturation tests, and we'll go from there. Now, here's the thing. Theoretically, everybody should have their own kind of blender pen to play with. Um, I don't have everybody's blender pen. So there you go. So much for like having all the toys. But I do have Prismacolor's blender and I have Copic's blender and I have Chromatic's blender. So we'll kind of just experiment with that. It's going to be a little loosey-goosey when it comes to the blending. I also have alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Um, now here's the thing. My rubbing alcohol is green. So we're going to see it on the paper at least a little bit. But sometimes you can get cool effects with alcohol. So um, Cutter Punk, who is Daryl, said that he was under the impression that pits did not dry but or did not blend and we had an answer already that if you catch them right away you can which reminds me one more thing i gotta look at i'm gonna go into my alcohol inks uh thing here and i'm gonna get some alcohol blending solution which is clear um just to see how that works so what i'm gonna do now is take the camera put them down and like i said we're gonna really try and just look at the shades of purple, a little bit of purple, because I thought then we could kind of compare. So I'm going to take the camera. I'm going to flip you around, friends. Okay, and now for the sake of time, what I'm doing is I've sped up the video and I'll just give you the voiceover action. So the Copic marker is a dual sided. Now this is the sketch and it does have a big brush nib, which as you can see will make nice little fine points, but it also has a chisel with a thin and a fine. So you can do some light calligraphy uh, kind of work to it. And I'm laying down some color and I'm laying down actually three different swatches with one layer, two layers, and three layers. So you can see exactly um, how it bleeds through and how dark it gets. And the Copic will give you more saturated color with those additional layers, but of course it will bleed through. And I'm using a little bit of a blending pen to try and blend out. And it really doesn't like to play that way. You almost have to layer colors with Copic, um, but you can put down a little bit of color on a non-porous surface and then pick it up and blend it out. So that's kind of a nice thing about the Copics is that those blending markers are really, really nice. So now I'm moving on to the Spectrum Noir. Um, I'm trying to write the colors up on top for you so you can see those as well. And it has a fine writing nib, a fine line, and then it has a chisel, which gives you a little bit of a calligraphy action, not too much. Also, one of the things I noticed is that the color is not true to what's on the cap. This is much more magenta in real life. Um, but you get three different levels of color saturation. Of course, it does bleed through. And um, let's see how it bleeds out. Again, kind of like the Copic, it doesn't blend with the colorless blender as much, but you can do that color pickup um, and then 
blend out option, which I kind of like. Now we're going to go on to the Letra Set Pro Marker. And again, I think these are now being made by Windsor and Newton. Um, but it, it, just a little note too, sometimes about the way the caps go on, I like the Pro Marker cap because the thin nib or the thin point has a, a little bullet shape on the top and then the square on the back. With this Letra Set, it's the same cap on both sides. And the Copic, it's the same cap on both sides, which means you can use either cap, but it means I can't find the right nib as easily when I need it. So um, going back to the Letra set here, I'm laying down some different levels of color. This is kind of a light lavender color, but you see it does darken up pretty well. I kind of like that. And um, we'll do the little blend out trick. Eh, this isn't what they're great at, but you can do the pick up and lay down. Now that's such a light lavender. It, it didn't give me a whole lot of color there. All right, so now we're going to move on with the Prisma color, and you get a thin point and a big chunky chisel. That is a huge chunky chisel, but I like the fine point. I think the finest point I've seen so far is actually on this Prisma color. It has a beautiful, rich color, and um, I just want to point out that these are the markers that most art students use, and they last a really long time. They are not refillable, but they have a lot of color in them, and I personally love this purple. So you get the nice three layers of lay down. And we're going to try our little blending tricks. And as you can see, the Prisma actually does blend out better than the other ones using that, uh, that blending tool. And then you can do the lay down and pick up. And there's a lot of saturated color, so it blends out pretty nicely, which I like. Now we're going to go on to the Faber-Castell. Now, I made a mistake. These are not truly alcohol-based markers. They're India ink, but they're in my stash, so I'm using them anyway. Um, it has one big brush nib, but you can make a fine and a thick line with it, which I think is pretty cool. And I love the way it makes those nice teardrops. Um, there's a lot of color that lays down. And as you flip it over, you'll see that it does not bleed through. Ta-da! So that may be important to you. And then you can't really see the blend out on the screen. I kind of fell off the top, but I'll show you in just a minute. It does not budge. So uh, neither with alcohol nor with a blending pen. So next we have the Chameleon Color Tones Marker, and it's got a bigger brush and a smaller brushy nib. And um, these are a little bit different because there is a little bit of bleed there. Um, so the fine tip is great for writing and then it has the nice brush. Um, now remember these particular markers have the like color blending nib uh, in the actual pen there. So there is a separate blender, but they also have a blending cartridge in each marker, which kind of gives you some options. And as you can see here, I actually am quote, charging it, which means I'm adding the blender to the nib, and then you can get the blend effect um, with each individual pen. But it'll also blend out using other blending pens as I'm using the Chromatics one here. So they, they will play nicely with other brands if you've got them as well. Now just to go over everything that I see, uh, I like the fine lines with the Copic and the Chameleon and the Prismacolor. I did notice a little bit of bleeding out on the Copic, which surprised All me. All right, so now we're gonna move over to the glossy photo paper. Now, the interesting thing about photo paper is that it really is meant to uh, absorb ink quickly and not move around. So we're kind of checking to see if it really is then color fast. So as you can see with the Copics, um, it really, it moves very, very little. That Copic gets into that paper and stays put even with a blender. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of that alcohol blending solution from Ranger just to see if I can also get it to smudge around. And as you can see, the Copic really is staying pretty much right where you put it. And then the last test was alcohol, and that rubbing alcohol did cause the Copics to move around a little bit. So next I'm going to this Spectrum Noir, and I'm laying down a little bit of color, and we'll do the same thing. First the Copic Blender, and I am seeing that move even a little more in real life than it did on camera. And now when we add the alcohol, boy, it really does move around a lot. And then with the alcohol blending solution, um, it makes some interesting speckles, which might be a fun technique we want to play with some more. But the Spectrum really does not grab in and stay put quite as well as the Copics. So next what I'm going to do is go ahead and do the same thing with the Letraset Pro. I do really like using alcohol markers on glossy paper. And you can see with the Electra set, with the blending pen, it lifts off a lot. Oh, wait, except I made a mistake. It's actually the Prismacolor. Whoops. 
See, craft test dummies for a reason. So if you wanted your alcohol inks to move around, using the Copic blender on the glossy paper causes it to move a lot. So it all depends on what effect you're trying to achieve. And with the alcohol blending solution, yes, even still, and see how it lifts it up? I kind of love this effect um, because it really does dissolve that alcohol ink right off the top of the paper. So I'm gonna be playing with that even a little bit more. All right, so now, what, what I was saying before, Letraset, not Prisma, Letraset. And we're gonna use the same technique. Now here's kind of a weird thing. I actually found that the Letraset marker kind of scratched the glossy surface off of the paper. And I don't know if I was pressing too hard or if it was, I don't know what, but it was just weird to me. Uh, but using the Copic blender, um, it only moved a little bit. With the alcohol, again, it didn't really move a whole lot. And with the blending solution, a little bit more, but not a whole lot. So if you want your colors to stay put, Letraset is a good choice for you. Now let's take a look at this Faber because as we know, this is not truly an alcohol marker. Um, it's with the India ink and look what happens with the alcohol. It just dissolves almost completely away. So kind of cool though, right? Like I can see me using this with a stencil or using some cool uh, mixed media effects. But if you want to lift uh, that India ink off of a glossy surface, use the alcohol blending solution or even just rubbing alcohol. And uh, as you can see, you can almost like erase it. It's just kind of cool. All right, so let's take a look at the Color Tones Chameleon Pens, and we'll do the same test. We're laying down color, and then we're going to try and blend it out with the Copic. And as you can see, the Chameleon does lift quite significantly, uh, which could give you some fun effects. And if you spray it with the alcohol, it will lift and lighten, which is kind of cool. And then lastly, that alcohol blending solution and more of the same. So I think this is really cool. This is why you test things out because if you want your colors to stay put, you might want the Spectrum or the Copic, but if you want it to move around, maybe the Prismacolor or the color tones are going to be the right markers for you. And if you like to play with those techniques, these are just things that you should know and uh, keep in mind when you're making your marker selections. Okay, so let's move on to our last swatch, which is going to be the Yupo, which is polypropylene. It's not really paper at all, but I was really interested to see how maybe the markers would look on these non-porous surfaces because they're alcohol, they evaporate and they dry, but you know, what is the effect like? And here with the Copics, you can see it's a very watercolory effect because the Yupo won't allow the alcohol to sink in, so you can blend it around with your finger, but you actually get this kind of watercolory brushstroke effect which is you know very different than what you get on the other surfaces also notice the color variations on the glossy paper the Copic is much darker than on the Yupo and it looks a little more gray on the heavy-duty cardstock so depending on what substrate you're using it's another thing to keep in mind see well, you wouldn't think of these things if I wasn't bringing it up to your attention all the time. So, okay now what I'm doing is I'm actually spraying uh, the Cop Copic um, with alcohol and then dripping the blending solution on it because I wanna see how it disperses and how it moves. And this is so exciting to me. I know that this is not what markers are necessarily for, but I love the fact that you can treat them like paint in this instance. So you can see that how the alcohol and the blending solution, you know, makes it drip like watercolor. So here again with the spectrum, I'm seeing that kind of watercolor effect. Um, it's almost like it was you know, you've added water and you haven't. And look at the speckling that you get with the alcohol ink uh, when you spray it. I just think that these are really fun. The spectrum seems to separate in a really cool fashion. Um, so if you, again, like these mixed media effects, these are kind of awesome products for you. Now let's take a look at the letter set. I'm a little sad now that this is such a light lavender color because I feel like I could really evaluate it better if it was darker. But I did see again a little bit of this bleedy, a little bit of this watercolor action um, and, and trying to layer over the top. Uh, but you get that cool like reactive melting look and I love this color dispersal. It's like a little mini atomic bomb right there on your paper. It goes Pow! Which, by the way, that made me realize that I hadn't really tried that technique, that that big drip method. Um, so I wanted to go back or over 
to the Copic and just try that. And again, I could see what that color dispersal is like. And I really think it's cool when it, it pushes the color kind of out of the way, leaving that nice, interesting dark ring. It's just another watercolor effect. So going on to the Prismacolor, which again, I love this color, especially now on the Yupo, looking again at the color differences, it's much more magenta, which you pick up on the Yupo and the glossy and a lot grayer on heavy duty card stock. So, um, just an interesting way, different colors of, in the same marker on different surfaces. So we spray it with the alcohol and you get that cool speckle effect. And then it settles down and it lightens considerably, which I think is very cool. And then with the alcohol, um, I was trying to give a little sprinkle there. You, again, that magenta color really comes up. So it's almost like a two-tone. So you may or may not like that. I think it's super cool. So let's take a look at this Faber Pit pen because again, India ink, but you also get the very cool sprinkly um, dispersal effects uh, with that product as well. So in that situation on the Yupo, again, this is polypropylene, you are gonna get some very similar effects to alcohol markers. If you already have these, this is something that you might wanna play with a little bit more. I actually think I like the Faber's reaction and the Prisma the best. So moving on to the Chameleon, we're gonna add some of that color down and we're gonna give it a little spray pss, pss, like that. And again, the lightning you see, that little bit of a speckling, and let's see how the drippy drippy goes. Oh, very cool. Again, almost like a two-tone. So um, I think the Letra set kept its color and the Spectrum kept their colors pretty consistently, but the Chameleon really lifted up with that kind of pink uh, color off of it. And again, here you can see that it looks like three different color markers on three different substrates, um, even though it is exactly the same marker. So just to do a little bit of post game analysis here and looking at the colors, I really like the way the Prisma has pretty much the same color family, but the Chameleon almost looks like it's two different colors. The Faber stays very true to itself. The Copic blends out very nicely. And the Letraset, um, while it blends, is just awfully light. Um, the Copic gave me some really good, interesting watercolor effects. I put little gold stars on the ones that I like the best. Um, but of course, again, this is all up to you. And as far as using it on the heavy cardstock, again, the Copics and the Prisma are really kind of my favorites. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and are able to make a better decision about what alcohol markers would be best for you. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And as always, have a crafty day.